Since the 1950s and 60s, there have been those who have set the American holiness movement over and against John Wesley. This doesn't strike me as particularly wise. If you actually get back and look at what leaders of the 19th century holiness movement said about Wesley, you'll find that they revered him and considered him very much to be the father of their movement. Take Phoebe Palmer, for instance. Phoebe Palmer had a major influence both on bringing about the holiness revival of the 19th century and on its theology. Her father was in, born in England and came as an immigrant to America. He joined the Methodist societies back in England and actually received his first class ticket from Wesley's own hand. So Phoebe Palmer grew up in New York City in a household in which John Wesley was revered. In fact, her whole goal was to try to bring American Methodism up to the standard of, of holiness that she believed British Methodism had achieved. In the early Church of the Nazarene, candidates for the course of study for ministry had to read John Wesley's life. Originally, this was Fitchett's book, Wesley and His Century. Later, it was John Telford's biography of John Wesley. They also had to read a book of Wesley's sermons, and in particular, 10 sermons that together covered the Ordo Salutis, or the Order of Salvation. Uh, these 10 sermons corresponded in exp explicating the doctrines in Articles 6 through 10 of the Nazarene Articles of Faith. They also had to read a book of Wesley's writings on holiness. It was an anthology, and that anthology, nearly 300 pages, including, included the plain account of Christian perfection and a number of other writings that Wesley had on the subject of holiness. So at least in terms of the 19th and early 20th century holiness movement, Wesley was considered to be a very strong and important theological resource. And, and indeed, to, to get through the course of study, you had to know his life, you had to know his writings on holiness, you had to know those sermons. So what is John Wesley's significance for the Church of the Nazarene? To put it very simply, he was the founder of our hermeneutical and theological tradition. And if you want to see how that hermeneutical tradition developed, you can read his plain account of Christian perfection and see how the different elements of it came together over the span of several years. In one of the final editorials that J.B. Chapman published in The Preacher's Magazine, he made this comment. He said, every preacher of full salvation should make a fundamental study of John Wesley's works.